Hello, my name is Steve Wechter, and I am the product coordinator here at Sukup Manufacturing. I'm also a part of the customer service team that uh, takes your phone calls throughout the service season to help you with any issues you may have. Today we're going to go over the setting, the velocity compensating valve for the Cyclone pneumatic system. There are a couple of adjustments that need to be made to the velocity compensating valve based on the size of system that you have. And we're going to do some close-ups here showing some of those steps and processes. First of all, with the velocity compensating valve, I wanted to show what the cone should look like when it's closed all the way. And that is that you cannot see any opening at the bottom of the, of the uh, valve body where that restrictor cone is setting in there. That is closed all of the way. Just to further show the short nut, the long nut, your control stem, and your pressure spring. To set your compensating valve to the size of system you have is done by removing this plug from the bottom of the, of the uh, velocity compensating valve. And inside here, we're going to notice some slots that are uh, cut into the restrictor cone plate. What you're going to do is you're going to take your screwdriver and you're going to go in here and you're going to adjust the opening. Notice the openings here as they change to uh, compensate for the, the system size. If you're operating a six inch system, you're going to want that pretty much all the way open. If you're operating a four inch system, you're going to want to close that down pretty well. If you're operating a five inch system, it's typically about 50% open. And that is where it should be set from the factory. To begin with, we really need to make sure that the system is sized correctly. So the issue has to be taken care of during the design phase of installing a pneumatic system. The Sukup Cyclone pneumatic system is sized to operate at about the middle of the operating range of your dryer. Anything over that or under that will tend to cause problems with grain degradation uh, as well as uh, not being able to handle the capacity that the uh, operator is going to need. What we have here today is the uh, mock-up of a Cyclone system uh, installation, starting off with the blower for the pneumatic systems. Uh, Sukup Manufacturing uses a positive displacement uh, rotary lobe type uh, blower uh, as, com as opposed to some other types of uh, blower systems. Uh, this offers the best uh, ability to maintain a constant uh, pressure and a constant volume of airflow in the system. We have the gate valve that we'll be utilizing here in, in just a few minutes to make some adjustments to the uh, system. Of, of course, the velocity compensating valve that we will be talking about and, and helping get that set here in just a moment. And of course, the uh, rotary airlock. Now, a properly installed system you want to install your velocity compensating valve between the blower and the rotary airlock. The rotary vane airlock, anything past that point will have grain in it and we do not want grain getting into our velocity compensating valve and messing up the function that it uh, needs to have in there. A properly installed pneumatic system has very few elbows or as few as possible particularly between the blower and the airlock. One elbow in there is fine. If we have to have two elbows in there, I would suggest redesigning the system to make it work that you would not need that second elbow in there. Having too many elbows causes problems with uh, air velocity and can affect the function of the entire system. The next thing that we want to look at in a pneumatic system installation is that we don't want any long inclines heading from, say, the ground level up to the top of a grain bin. These tend to be problematic in that we lose capacity very quickly and easily 
due to the fact that the grain wants to fall out of the airstream and after a while we build up such volume of grain that we can actually plug the pneumatic system. When we're talking about conveying grain with a pneumatic system, you have to understand how the system operates and functions in order to understand how we're going to set the velocity compensating valve. First of all, we have to talk about the air pressure versus velocity. Pressure is actually a good thing in a pneumatic system, contrary to most uh, people's idea about how these should work. Pressure means that we don't have the velocity so high that we're sending the grain to its destination at such a high rate of speed or high velocity that it's actually damaging the grain before it enters the grain bin. So what we want to see is we want to see a, a reasonable amount of, of pressure in the system and by using that we can reduce the velocity. The second thing that we want to discuss is dilute phase versus dense phase conveying. You'll hear these terms used when we talk about pneumatic conveying systems. Basically, the Sukup Cyclone pneumatic system uses dense phase conveying. Dilute phase conveying can occur when we have too much air in the system. Dilute phase conveying will cause damage to your grain. So we want to make sure that we're in the dense phase conveying. And what that basically means is that we have enough product in the line that the air is actually pushing that product through the conveying line rather than that product riding on the air in that conveying line. So we want to make sure that we have enough product coming into the system and that we don't have too much air into the system to where we're having that product floating on the air rather than being pushed through the system. Okay, for the purposes of this video, we're going to uh, do our uh, adjusting in a nice controlled environment here where we don't have all the noise of the dryer and the pneumatic system operating. We do hope that uh, at, uh, at some time that we can get out on an actual site and show you uh, what it looks like in an actual operating system. But due to the noise that we would have on that site, uh, we're not gonna be able to do a lot of discussing how to go about setting the thing. One of the first things that you want to do when you first install your velocity compensating valve is that you want to check to make sure that all of the uh, adjustable controls are free to move and that the restricting cone can actually move freely up and down in the system. To check that, simply just make some turns on each one of the, the control knobs making sure that they will turn freely. When you get started trying to adjust it, if there's difficulties in turning any of these, it will add difficulty to the actual uh, adjusting of the, of the valve. To start with down below here, we're gonna talk about the restrictor cone down here. The restrictor cone is the part that has to move up and down. It opens and closes the amount of air that is in the system. By bleeding off air, we can reduce the velocity of the, of the grain going through the system. So we need to be able to have the velocity compensating valve set properly in order to automatically do that for you. We're going to set the system, set the velocity compensating valve for the minimum amount of grain flow coming out of your dryer. On a Sukup automatic dryer, this would be at approximately median roll speed of 10%. What you're gonna to wanna to do to start with is you're gonna to want to close your uh, gate valve on the system completely down so that we're not bleeding off any air. Once you have that closed, you want to check your pressure gauge and see what kind of pressure we have in there while grain is going through. Now keep in mind, any adjustments that we make throughout the day on the velocity compensating valve must be made at a slow, easy rate. You want to give that system a few minutes to, to recalibrate itself before making any further adjustments. If we make too many adjustments too quickly, we run the risk of damaging grain on one end to plugging the system on the other end. So when we make these adjustments, we want to make them slow and deliberately 
and make sure that we're not, we're giving the system enough time to adjust itself to get to where it needs to be. If we have less than three pounds of pressure, uh, then we have to start looking at what we need to do to adjust the velocity compensating valve. Typically, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna back the top stem valve off to reduce the pressure on the spring, and we're going to turn the long nut up so that the restrictor cone closes all the way down. And you're probably going to need to turn both at the same time to, in order to keep the pressure off the spring and keep th this turning to the point where that restrictor cone will come closed. Now keep in mind that this is being done while the system is running and there is grain coming through it and again uh, at a minimal amount of grain capacity based on what your dryer will do. Again, on a Sukup automatic grain dryer, that's gonna be about 10% meter in roll speed. So we get the cone to close, and uh, we're gonna go into step two. What we're going to do is we're gonna to begin to turn the long stem down to make sure that we have some spring tension on the long nut. As we get, make sure that we've got spring tension, then we'll begin to turn the long nut down until we start to see the restrictor cone opening up slightly. At that point, we wanna check our pressure gauge to make sure that we are maintaining that three pounds of pressure. If we start to see that pressure go up, then we want to turn the long nut back slightly and then get it to where we're maintaining about three pounds of pressure. At that point, we want to adjust the long stem down clockwise so that the spring has a little tension on that uh, restrictor cone and has the ability to cause it to float and open as necessary as the capacity of the grain coming out changes. Now we want to set it for the high capacity side of it. And that is very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the short nut all the way up against the long nut. And that will automatically set the high side so that we know where our high end is going to be. Now remember, as that pressure goes up, our velocity is slowing down and we're, that's what we want it to do. So we get this short nut up against the long nut And once that has reached that, put a little tension on it so it holds it there, and we have completed step three. Step four includes setting the spring tension so that the system can float in its operating position. This is done by turning the uh, long stem down until the spring tension has increased to the point where we start to notice a change in the pressure of the system. Again, we have minimum amount of grain flow coming into the system, and we're going to set that spring tension until we have uh, tension there, and then we're going to set the jam nut down against the valve body, and that will lock that long stem in place to keep it from vibrating one way or another during the function of the of the system. Step five includes adjusting the system and making sure that it's ready to handle your maximum output of your dryer. Adjust your dryer to its maximum metering roll speed. Keep in mind that the grain coming out of that dryer may not be dry, but we're not gonna run enough grain out for it to really matter once it gets into the grain bin. So adjust your metering roll speed on your dryer to its maximum rate. On Sukup automatic dryers, this will be approximately 40 to 50% metering roll speed. So what we wanna do is we wanna watch the system as we gradually increase that rate to the point where we are at our maximum flow rate of that dryer and then check our pressure gauge. If we are maintaining three pounds of pressure, we're good. But if for any reason that pressure has gone up or down from that point, 
we're going to want to make another adjustment to the system. The pressure has increased above three PSI. We will want to back off the spring tension to allow the, the system to open a little bit. So we're going to release the jam nut and turn the control stem up or down, depending upon which way we need to, to go for opening or closing that uh, restrictor cone. Then we will reset the, the uh, jam nut against that again and watch our system. Keep in mind that any adjustments that you make need to be given a little bit of time, let the system equalize itself or balance itself. If we make quick changes, we may be missing the best set point and uh, moving past it too quickly to get to where the system needs to be. If any adjustments were made in step five, we will need to go back and, and set the system for the minimum grain flow. This is done by reducing the metering roll speed back to your 10% metering roll speed and checking your pressure and making sure that it is not below three PSI. If it is, then we need to start over and set the system again for the minimum and then recheck the maximum. If no pressure difference is noted, then check your grain to make sure that you're not damaging the grain as it's going into the grain bin. At this point, your pneumatic system, your velocity compensating valve is set and ready to go.